So most of you know that I uh, read up on Jay Abraham books and uh, I was a big fan of his work and one day I got to meet him and um, when I went to meet him, uh, one of the guests there also was uh, Teddy Garcia. And Teddy uh, turns out to be the mastermind behind all the uh, super gurus webinars and automation from many years ago, probably the one whose blueprints were then copied and templated and turned into software and then um, end up in software solutions that you're seeing now. But chances are a lot of them trace back to Teddy. Uh, I struck up a good relationship with Teddy. I've seen him at almost every event that I've been to. He's uh, extremely knowledgeable, super connected. Uh, even just transferring his um, slides onto the computer, the, the names that are in the folders of the people that he works with are all people who are famous and you would recognise. So it's a privilege for us to have Teddy here and I'd like to welcome you up uh, to share with us some automation. Come on, Teddy Garcia. You got the moves there, yeah, Teddy. Yeah, I did, man. Yeah, that was <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have fun. All right. How's everybody doing? All right, so we're going to talk about how to create a sales vortex so you can free up your time, have more fun, and make more money. Does that sound cool with everybody? Yeah. All right, cool. So what would you guys do with just, let's just say, if I could give you an extra two hours a day by the end of this presentation, what would you do with it? Just throw, throw some stuff out that you might do. Sleep. sleep. Everybody wants to sleep. What else? What's that? PlayStation? Is that the name? PlayStation? Do some more marketing. Exactly. Family, exactly, right? Because the, the bottom line is we all got into business for ourselves so that we could have more time, but the reality of it is that that's not always the case, right? So like, what are some of the things we got to do as entrepreneurs on a consistent basis? Well, we got to read and respond to emails and send out broadcasts to our list, right? How many of us have to do that every day? Just out of curiosity, who's got a team that kind of does everything for them versus everybody's solopreneurs? All right, good, good mix. How about creating content? And if you're doing like an offline business, or you're working with clients, how many of you have to write proposals on a regular basis? Things like that, awesome. Plan and manage your ad campaigns so you can drive some traffic. We all have to spend some time doing that, thinking through, writing the copy, setting up things, etc. How about working on your website? Optimizing it, split, doing different split tests, things like that. And then also research and learning, right? This internet's changing every single day. We have to come to events like this, which take out several days out of our schedule, uh, researching stuff online, things like that. Marketingexperiments.com is a site that I like to research a lot. They have lots of good different tests that they run. Uh, coaching calls, webinars, who has students that they have to coach or do weekly webinars or project update calls with your clients, et cetera. And building JV and affiliate relationships, right? That's why we come to events like this, to kind of meet new people, but it's not just about emailing them right before you're going to do a launch or something, asking them to promote. You've got to kind of nurture that relationship and build it over time. And then finally, if you do have a team that you're outsourcing, it's either managing that team or you know, putting up different job offers to find people to do stuff for you. All that stuff kind of takes time. So if we break it down, like read and respond to emails on a typical day, you might spend one to three hours a day doing that. Uh, creating content and proposals, that could be two to four hours, depending on you know, what, how much content you're creating. Planning and managing your ad campaigns, you could spend one to three hours doing that. Working on your websites, let's say an hour conservatively, although it's often a lot longer than that. Uh, doing research, let's say at a minimum we spend an hour a day just checking out new tools or new information, things like that. Coaching calls, webinars, this can be, you know, some people do these all day long from morning till night, right? But let's say one to three hours. Uh, building affiliate relationships, just touching base with people, maybe an hour, and managing your team, maybe an hour. Does that sound fair? Is that like what most you guys are spending to do some of this stuff? So we're talking 9 to 18 hours a day, right, just doing that stuff. Now, the good news is that those are all the things that actually make you money. Those are all the good tasks, right? There's the bad news is that most of you are trying to do this all yourself, right? This is, your, this is the typical org chart for an information marketer. Uh, and, you know, in order to build a business that's scalable and that can run without you, you got to kind of get out of this mode. Uh, and this doesn't even include all the other stuff that you should be outsourcing, but you probably aren't. Uh, things like your customer support, managing payments, refunds, doing the bookkeeping, social media, project. So there's lots of other stuff that we got to do in the business. Uh, and this is what it ends up looking like, right? So this is from my mentor, Rich Shefferin. Uh, 
This is, I was running a, uh, an online shopping mall at the time when I first saw this map, and I was like, holy crap, that's me, right? This is, this is my world, right? And I'm doing all these things, trying to grow this company, and it's no wonder that I'm stuck. Uh, so that's kind of when I sought out Rich and built a relationship with him, and that's kind of where my career got started in this business. But those are just things you got to do in your business, right? There's other things we all have to do, and there's other things that we can't delegate, right? So what else requires your time on a constant basis that you can't delegate? How about your health and fitness, right? We can't, we can't work very effectively if we're sick or tired all the time or we don't have energy. Obviously, nobody else can go to the gym and work out for you. I wish they could. Uh, you can't have other people cook for you, but, you know, if you enjoy cooking or preparing meals for your family, that's going to take some time every day. Feeding your soul. This is kind of crucial, right? To spend some time every day, 20, even if it's just 20 minutes, just kind of connecting with yourself or your higher power, whatever it is, but just to kind of get that clarity and that, that me time, which is very important. Um, your love relationship. I don't think you want to outsource this in most cases. It's probably not a good idea, right? Uh, so you definitely got to devote some time. And, you know, as entrepreneurs, like, we, we all have kind of very understanding partners usually. But, you know, I've seen plenty of relationships get destroyed from just working too much and, not, and just taking it for granted, right? So it's crucial that we spend some time there. And spending time with your kids, right? This is for me. For who's, How many people have kids here in the room? Awesome, cool. Yeah, so for me, this is kind of a, a huge thing. So do you ever end up feeling like this? Just kind of just want to pull your hair out, just wishing that you had more time in the day, just being able to do the things that you actually love to do when you want to do them, with who you want to do them, without worrying about how you're going to pay for it. That's really what we all got into this for, right? So for me, it's all about this little guy right here. This is my son, Dawson. Uh, he's about to turn 10 years old, and... You know, it got to a point where I was working so much that, and I, only, I have split custody of him, so I only have him like every other day. So Saturdays is like our day to kind of have fun and play and do stuff. But I was working so much that he just got into the habit of every Saturday morning, no matter what, asking me this question. Dad, do you have work to do today or can we play? And that just wasn't acceptable to me anymore. Right? So that's when I kind of really figured out that I need to find ways to kind of leverage my time, leverage my business, and automate things so that I love to play. I mean, this is what I love to do. It's part of the reason I had a kid, right, is so that I could actually go play with him. And now he's at that age where this is the fun time, right? So I love to do tricks on bikes. I love to go ride motocross with him. Uh, I just learned to surf yesterday, so that was kind of like a bucket list thing, which was awesome to actually learn to surf for the first time in Australia. Thank you, James. Uh, snowboarding, playing the drums, like this is me. Like I've always grown up as kind of an X Games kind of guy. Uh, owned a bicycle shop as a kid, well, 23, so still a kid. Uh, but made a lot of mistakes in that business and definitely could have used some of this stuff during that time. So my mission is really to help you automate your life so that you can make more money and play more. Does everybody want to do that? Who wants to play more? Have more fun? Awesome. All right. So I handed out uh, on your seat. Uh, kind of an, an overview of what an automated marketing funnel looks like for a typical internet marketing business. Uh, and what I'm going to do is kind of go through that and kind of break it down. But I wanted you guys to have a graphical representation of it, not only to take home, but a lot of people struggle when they're trying to put together their, their marketing campaigns in terms of what does this actually look like? How do I draw it out? Um, so that's the basic flow for most, most businesses. And, you know, it involves all the different stages and then different sequences for different messaging. And each one of those boxes has different emails and stuff in there. So we're going to kind of break some of that down as much as possible uh, and walk you through it. Now, there's other things that you can automate other than your marketing. In fact, there's seven things that I think you should automate that could easily bring you those two hours of free time right away just when you leave here. Uh, for me, the number one thing that's freed up a lot of my time uh, was my clearing up my scheduling. So we'll talk about ways to do that. Uh, writing proposals, that was another thing that used to be a huge time suck. We've got a way to automate that. Your content creation, your content distribution, so once you create the content, actually getting it out. Your email management, how many people spend more than three or four hours just managing email and trying to keep it organized? Uh, and your tasks and your projects, and finally, we'll get to your marketing. So your scheduling. I use uh, schedulewonce.com. This is a great tool because it eliminates the whole need of 
having to send three or four emails back and forth of, oh, there's Tuesday or Thursday at four work. Oh, no, I, gotta, I can only do five. Like, you just send them a link. They go to your calendar. They can pick a time, uh, and then you can confirm that time. And even if they need to reschedule, there's an easy link for them to reschedule. It sends automatic reminders. Uh, and I'm actually working with Schedule Once right now to help them create an integration with Infusionsoft. So you'll be able to automatically target people or tag people inside of Infusionsoft once they schedule an appointment and things like that. Time trade is another one that kind of does basically the same things. But that's a huge time saver that I definitely recommend you implement. Two, your proposals. Uh, there's a software called Quote Roller. There's another one called Nifty Quoter. And when I say proposals, too, you can think of sales letters as a proposal in some ways, too. So Quote Roller will actually kind of let you create document templates. And for each different product or service that you offer, you can have kind of drag and drop blocks of content that describe that. So you can quickly assemble a proposal, create the pricing sheet. And uh, what's nice about Quote Roller, too, is it gives you analytics. So if you send somebody your proposal, uh, you can tell if they viewed it, how long they viewed it, what sections they viewed, did they view it more than once or twice, did they share it with somebody, all this kind of cool stuff that you can't tell just by sending it from an email. So uh, Nifty Quoter is kind of the same thing. Your content distribution. So Taki just talked about this, actually. So using Dropbox. Uh, what? No, yeah, I just added it while in the back of the room. I was like, that's brilliant. No, <laughs> no but so we, the, we use Zapier to integrate it. So you can either have a team like Taki does that can go into your folder and get it, or you can use Zapier, which is a third-party service that just kind of helps you connect lots of different apps. There's like 250 different applications that you can make connections to between Zapier. Uh, so you can have the file save the Dropbox, and then Zapier can send it over to Casting Words, and they can transcribe it for you automatically. Uh, casting words is a little bit more expensive than using a, a VA to do it, though. Your content distribution. So there's a couple other tools that are like Zapier, which is ifttt.com. This is if this, then that. Uh, this is a great tool to kind of help you put up these kind of rules as well, again, be between different systems. So a perfect example is you create a, a new post on your blog. You can create a rule of if this, then that to have it send that post information to buffer. And then you can configure Buffer to send it out to Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, at whatever schedule you want, and, and distribute it for you. Uh, Hootsuite's another good tool for social media and kind of you know, preloading your, your social media posts and different content that you want to automatically go out. So you just plan it all ahead of time. You set it up, queue it up, and then it kind of goes autom automatically. Uh, email management. So like I said, you know, a lot of us spend a ton of time managing email. These are the three tools that I really couldn't live without. Uh, one is Active Inbox HQ. Uh, how many of you are familiar with David Allen's getting things done methodology? So Active Inbox HQ actually turns Gmail into that sort of system uh, where it makes it really easy to, to mark emails as something that's urgent, needs replies, a next action you're waiting on, and then easily sort it by project and context and things like that. Um, Sane Later is a great tool of just cleaning out the junk. So basically Sane Later looks for like anything that has an unsubscribe link in it and kind of puts it in a different folder for you to look at later. It keeps it out of your main inbox so you don't have to look at it and, and process it every day. And then Unroll Me, which is the one I really like the best, is uh, similar to saying later, it'll take all the emails and one, it gives you a quick way to unsubscribe from everything. So you can just go through a list of emails and say, nope, 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 don't want that anymore. And then the ones that you still want to see, it'll send you a daily digest every day of all the emails that you've told it to roll up. So you get one email, it's got just screenshots of like 50 different emails in it. You can quickly glance at them and figure out which ones are, are worth looking at and kind of ignore the rest. Uh, so that's a really valuable tool. Is this helping? Is that yeah. Awesome, cool. Uh, your task and project management. So we use two tools primarily for, for task and project management. Uh, one is Reich.com and the other is Smartsheet.com. What I love about Reich is the fact that it integrates directly with Gmail and so as you know, most of your tasks often come to you in the form of an email, something that a client needs you to do. And Reich gives you a little button at the bottom of the email that says create task. And it'll take the body of that email, any attachments, and you can e instantly categorize it to what folder, assign it to who it goes to, and when it needs to be done by, and automatically it's in your project management system. So there's no re-entering of information. Uh, and Smartsheet.com, if you're not familiar with that, it's kind of like a, a, an online spreadsheet, kind of like a Google Doc. But what's great about it is that every row in the spreadsheet allows you to A, have a discussion about that row, and B, 
attach files to that row. So let's say you're planning out building a landing page, for instance, and somebody's got to write the copy, somebody's got to create the video, somebody's got to set up the form in Infusion and provide the form code to the web developer. You can have a different row for each of those things, and then as those things are created, they just get uploaded to the Smartsheet. So everything's all in one place. You're not searching through emails to find what was the latest version of the copy or where's the video or the form. Everything's kind of all together in one seamless place. And marketing. So is three tools um, that you can use to automate your marketing. These are in no particular order because uh, they're all different, and some are better for certain things, some are better for other things. It just kind of depends. Uh, Infusionsoft's kind of the, the big daddy for the most part just because they just raised 54 million bucks. Um, so they're doing a lot of development and things like that. Um, Office Autopilot is another great solution, uh, which in some ways is easier to use and has some other cooler features like being able to set up membership sites uh, and integrate with your website a lot easier. Uh, and Active Campaign is a relatively new one. Uh, Active Campaign is kind of like the MailChimp of marketing automation, where it doesn't have a shopping cart, it doesn't have affiliate, it's just emails. Uh, but you can actually get a free account for 2,500 contacts, and you have full marketing automation features. You can put if this, then that type logic in it. Uh, in fact, you can actually even customize the content of it in a particular email template based on different criteria and create rules in that. So it's pretty cool. All right, so this is where we're kind of talk through this funnel a little bit. So in Mar number one thing you got to do is you got to drive traffic to an offer, right? Everybody else has been talking about this today, so I'm going to leave that to the experts who drive traffic. But somehow or another, you need to drive traffic. You need to capture those leads, get them into your system so that you can start having a conversation with them. You need to segment and bond with those leads so that they'll actually know you, like you, trust you, and eventually buy from you. You need to make them some sort of sales presentation, whether it's a webinar like Taki just talked about, or a video sales letter, or just a regular long form sales letter, something to make that presentation. You need to convert those leads into buyers once they've seen that presentation. And you then need to fill the sale and send them to other offers, gather testimonials, referrals. This is a, a huge part. Like, this is a lot. Like, Everything on that map, the top part of the map, you guys probably understand pretty well in terms of driving traffic, sending them to the squeeze page, capturing the list. What I see most people don't have in place is the stuff at the bottom, like what happens after somebody purchases from you. How do you nurture that relationship? How do you get them to buy more? Things like that. Uh, and then finally, you have an ongoing nurture sequence just to kind of keep people engaged and keep them informed. So we're going to dive a little bit deeper into each of these.